Has uh, all the documents been turned in, Council? Everyone got documents turned in, signed? Well, while Pat's going through them, uh, a couple of aldermen need to floor for a few minutes, so I will start with Alderman Warner. Alderman Warner, are you ready? Yes, thank you, Your Honor. I guess uh, everyone knows I was Nathan Hare's uncle, so just have a little statement I'd like to read. For the family of uh, Nathan Allen Hare, I would like to thank everyone for their kindness and prayers over the last few months. Cindy and Jim, Nathan's parents, and Sarah and Nathan's sister, may God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Warner. Alderman Ports. Thank you, Honor. First of all, my condolences to the Nathan Hare family. Uh, this past week, there was an article in the newspaper about a phone call that my wife had received. The uh, article did result in the person calling up and apologizing to both my wife and myself for the comment. And he also asked me to apologize to the city to assure him that he's a Christian and not a terrorist and he didn't mean what he said and it was a poor choice of words. Thank you. Are we ready? Okay. Do we have any anyone else who needs to address the council? <laughs> Let me as long as we have a minute, then let me go through the agenda for this week. Obviously, council this evening. At 3.30 Friday afternoon, we'll have capital improvements. At 6 o'clock Thursday evening will be the Committee of the Whole meeting. And that's where this document will be discussed at length. And it will be televised. It will also be open to public. Correct, Alderman Van Akron? Correct. Um, and you will take all questions at that time? Be here all night. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. And Alderman Van Akron also informed me that if we do not get through the document Thursday evening, we will have another committee hold meeting that following Monday, correct? Correct. Until we get through the whole document. So everyone should have ample time to go through the document and um, read what, what's all in it. And then uh, if you have any questions, of course, Staff's always here. If you have a question in my office, please call. Let us know. So that's the agenda. Okay. We'll call the 24th regular meeting of the Common Council to order. Pat? Would you call the roll, please? Bauman? Here. Deberg? Here. Eberg? Here. Doyle? Here. Manny? Here. Moody? Here. Perez? Here. Ports? Here. Schultz? Here. Stephan? Excuse. D. Van Akron? Here. T. Van Akron? Here. Vanderweel? Here. Wangaman? Here. Warner? Here. Weniger? Here. 15 present. Quorum's present. Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the minutes of the previous meeting be approved as entered on the record. Move to the second that minutes of the previous meeting be approved under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. We have a young scout with us in the back. Would you please come forward, lead, lead us in a pledge of allegiance, please? You want to come right up here? Last time we, I had a call and people said they could not hear the Pledge of Allegiance when we were saying it. And that's because we never had the mics on. So. Okay, can you chop up here and just turn it off? There you go. Okay. I pledge allegiance to a flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I had to answer that question on the Jerry Beter show, why we don't have our mics on for the pledge. So never thought of it that way. OK, we have three hearings this evening. I will read all three, and if any interested persons or parties wishing to be heard, 
please step up to the microphone, give us your name, address, and what you'd like to be heard on. First is the assessment for those benefited properties against which assessments are proposed for the parking assessment district of number one. Second is assessment for those benefited properties against which assessments are proposed for the parking assessment district number two. And the third hearing is assessment for those benefited properties against which assessments are proposed for the parking assessment district of number four. Any interested persons wishing to be heard? Are there any interested persons wishing to be heard? Alderman Van Eken. Your Honor, I move that the hearing be closed. Second. Move to the second hearing be closed under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Public forum? Gary Dolmas. Gary. <coughs> Honorable Mayor, Council Members, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Gary Dalmas, and I'm President of the Sheboygan Development Corporation. I'd like to take a moment this evening to at least address this group regarding the development of the South Pier District. As you may have read, I wrote a letter which appeared in yesterday's Sheboygan Press regarding the building of a water park, hotel, restaurant, and convention center. My very first line in that letter was that the city of Sheboygan is at a very critical juncture. I truly believe this. I've stood here before this respected group a number of times asking for you to support this project and asking for you to enter negotiations with the Great Lakes people and commenting on this development with Great Lakes. Tonight, for the first time, the detailed negotiations are going to be presented to you in document number 2461. It's right here. It's 64 pages long. It's a lot of information. This document did not occur easy. It was through the efforts of your mayor, your finance director, Mr. Gephardt, your city attorney, Steve McLean, your city planners, Paulette Henders, Tom Holt, and your engineer, your bond counsel, Coyles and Brady, your attorneys, business and financial people from the SDC. Your administration worked hard on this document and needs to be commended. There's been some discussion as why hasn't this information been out to you earlier? I will share with you that negotiations change daily, weekly, and sometimes even hourly. The reason none of this was made public is that had we released any information, it would have been the wrong information, and disclosure prior to getting this document could have stopped this project. And no one wanted to take that risk. Quite candidly, every effort to put the city in a better position was taken. Is there some risk? Yes, there is some risk. But I believe when you see what has been negotiated for the city, the guarantees that are on the table, the gain that there is for the city, it will far outweigh the risk. The creation of jobs, the taxes that are going to be generated, the additional room tax, a convention center that we've never had, that people who've lived through all their lives wish to have had, and construction jobs, and the final product are excellent. I have had the opportunity to see some of those construction drawings. This is not a fly-by-night organization. It's something I think we could be very proud of. One thing I have to make very clear, and I have to make it be very certain, no one from the SDC or the Friends of Sheboygan are supporting this project because of any personal financial gain or benefit to ourselves. The only gain we have is we want the city of Sheboygan and its residents to be happy, to be content with the project, and it's for that sole purpose that we've pledged our money and our time and our support. Hundreds and literally hundreds of hours and hundreds of thousands of dollars 
have been given to support this project from the private sector. The document you have in front of you is very complex. It represents many hours of labor. As I said prior, I believe it's a good document. We would like to offer to anyone on the Common Council the expertise of our financial SDC business people to sit down with Mr. Gephardt and you and examine it and, an and answer any questions that you might have. In addition, we pledge to support and assist in any way, any way we can to make this development the best that has ever occurred in the city of Sheboygan in 150 years. And one that this council can be proud they voted on. This is a big decision to make. We realize it. You've got a lot of stuff on your plate right now. But I'm confident that you will be as enthusiastic as supporting it as the business community, the SDC, and the Friends of Sheboygan. We are, and we hope you are, and we hope you're pleased with the document. In any way we can help, we're willing to help. We understand, as a business community, that the final decision is up to this group and this body. We only ask that you look at it open-mindedly. We know there's a tight time frame. The tight time frame wasn't done intentionally. It just took months and months and months and months of negotiations. It wasn't done to ramroad anything through. And it was when the final document is here, as I said before, we believe it's a good document. We believe that you'll be happy with it. With that, we ask for your support and anything we can do to help you, please call on us. And thank you for allowing me to speak to you this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. That's all. OK. Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Your Honor. I guess I was expecting more people to speak this evening. Um, consent agenda. Yes. Correct. Yeah. I would move to file the communication, accept and file all ROs, accept and adopt all committee reports, all resolutions and general ordinances be put upon their passage. Move it and second to accept and adopt all RCs, accept and file all ROs, pass all resolutions and ordinances. And file communications. And file communications, excuse me. That's from 241 through 2427. Alderman Perez. Thank you, Your Honor. If, if I may, I'd like to address uh, item 2414 and 2415. Okay. In discussion. 2414, 2415. Okay. Your Honor, this is an issue that came up last year. This is regarding the, uh, the things that we provide the John Michael Kohler Arts Center for the uh, annual boat regatta. We, we discussed this last year and really never really came to any sort of agreement, although the, uh, the request was approved. And again, I will vote in favor of this request tonight, but I'd like to make some comments uh, towards that. I am a frequent visitor and a big supporter of John Michael Kohler Arts Center. I am particularly grateful for all the Arts Center does to, for our wonderful community. The Arts Center annual boat regatta is an exa excellent example of what they do for our community. The event is truly a wonderful and much anticipated family event. For years, the Art Center has requested specific things they need to hold its annual boat regatta. For years, the city has graciously helped them. Specifically, we grant use of a city park, we install fencing to specific area, we supply 22 wooden tables, two garbage trucks, trash barrels, trash removal, access to, public, to electricity, temporary sanitary facilities, and police security. My concern is one of fairness. These things that the art center is requesting and we provide and never charge them for are the same things we charge other organizations for, such as the JCs, Kiwanis Club, when they hold Broadworth Day and Lake Fest in our parks. If we do it for one organization, why don't we do it for the others? I realize that perhaps some of the city's expense is justified in providing for the Arts Center's boat regatta because the city holds its own annual 4th of July celebration the same day in basically the same area. However, the exact expenses attributed to each event have never been determined. They have been commingled. We really don't know who's paying for what. 
I hope this council does approve this request. I also hope this council proceeds to establish standards that will govern its involvement in events that are not sponsored by the city. I want us to be as fair as we possibly can with everyone we do business with. Thank you. Alderman Vanderwill. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I just have a question, I guess it would be for Tom. How much money do we put into the, the boat regatta? I don't know. I don't have the budget in front of me. I honestly can't tell you what the total is on that. I know that it comes out of the room tax dollar as far as the, ce the celebrations. It's part of the 4th of July celebration festivities. So. I, it's, we're out there anyways picking up garbage. That's mainly what we're doing. We're setting up barricades, so I can't imagine it being more than a couple $3,000 for that. I, but I can't say for certain. Did you want this voted on separately? Okay, if there's no other discussion, everything from 24-1 through 24-27, people to be put upon their passage. Would you call the roll, please? D. Berg, Aye. E. Berg, Aye. Doyle, Aye. Manny, Aye. Moody, Aye. Perez, Aye. Ports, Aye. Schultz, D. Van Akron, T. Van Akron, Vanderweel, Aye. Wangaman, Aye. Warner, Aye. Weninger, Aye. Bauman. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carried. 2428 to be referred. 2459, we'll hold for 2457. 2429. I mean, 2429, excuse <laughs> okay. me. We'll hold for 2457, yeah, okay. That makes more sense, doesn't it? 2430 lies over. 2431 through 43 to be referred. 2244 by Alderman Warner, authorizing entering to contract for purchase of one police department cargo van. Alderman Warner. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I need to ask for suspension of the rules. Is there any objections to suspension? I guess explanation. I would be glad to do that. Uh, what happened is in this particular instance, the van was ordered in October of 2002, and the uh, people that the van was ordered from failed to deliver the van as spec out. They had ordered a conversion van from a second party, and in this case, we're coming up on the end of the, of the year here, and the Sheboygan Chrysler Center has offered, offered to uh, hold their price that they made and pass along a manufacturer's allowance of approximately $1,251 for a total price of $15,800 for the van, which is below what it would have been spec out prior to that. Uh, the previous dealer, for some reason, was unable to meet the, uh, the requirements. And in order to get it passed before the end of the year, we'd like to move this one through. It's less money than we would have spent. Okay, okay. Alderman Warner, proceed. On that, Your Honor, do we have to vote on suspension? On that, Your Honor, I would make a motion the resolution be put upon its passage. Moved and second, the resolution be put upon its passage. If there's no further discussion, would you call the roll, please? Eberg, Aye. Doyle, Aye. Manny, Aye. Moody, Aye. Perez, Aye. Ports, Aye. Schultz, D. Van Akron, T. Van Akron, Vanderweel, Wangaman, Warner, Aye. Weininger, Aye. Bauman, D. Berg, D. Berg, Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carried. 2445 by Alderman T. Van Akron and Schultz, authorizing retaining outside legal counsel in the matter of Tracy R. Holden versus Daniel D. Dietrich, Alderman Van Akron. Your Honor, I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. I need suspension. Oh boy. <laughs> no, you need suspension. Yeah. <laughs> um, I move that we ask for suspension. Second. Second. And now, now we're, we're going to have second. Steve explain it's why. Is, <laughs> is there any objections to suspension? Okay, Steve, would you like to explain why we're suspending? Uh, this is a lawsuit that was filed several weeks ago. Um, clock is ticking on filing an answer. Uh, Sibmic has already been in contact with the, the Olson Colt Gunderson firm. They have tentatively already filed an answer. Uh, I guess the, the hope is that we can give them authorization so that they can continue to defend the case. 
uh, sooner the better. Uh, I want to get the answer in and uh, get the case rolling. So. Okay. Unfortunately, we did. We uh, this was going to be discussed at the risk management committee meeting at, uh, last week, and that meeting got canceled. So, rather than wait till the next risk management committee meeting and bring it into the next council meeting, um, that's eating up valuable time as far as getting an answer. Anybody okay. want to object before we go on? And I'll move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Moved and second, a resolution be put upon its passage under discussion. Hearing none, would you call the roll? Doyle? Aye. Manny? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Porras? Aye. Schultz? Aye. D. Van Akron? Aye. T. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangeman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Wenninger? Aye. Fallman? Aye. D. Berg? Aye. E. Berg? Aye. 15 eyes. <laughs> Motion carried. You're listening that time, huh? <laughs> 2446 by Alderman T. Van Akron and Schultz and Perez amending the bid operating plan for 2003. Alderman Van Akron. Your Honor, I would move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Okay. Moved and second, a resolution be put upon its passage under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. 2447 will lie over. 2448 through 2456 to be referred. Uh, 2457, along with 2429, by salary and grievance, recommending internally filling various positions in the Public Works Department. Alderman D. Van Akron. Your Honor, I move the committee report be accepted and adopted. Thank you. Moved and second that committee report be accepted and adopted. Under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. 2458 to be referred. Alderman Van Akron. Your Honor, did we file the 20, along with that? That was part of the motion. Thank it you. Really yeah. Okay. 2459 will lie over. 2460 to be referred. 2355, a resolution by Alderman T. Van Akron, Schulz, Perez, Doyle, and Stefan, transferring funds to provide monies to establish estimated revenue and appropriation for TID number 10 Water Street Renewal Project. Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Move to second a resolution be put upon its passage. Excuse me. I don't have it back. Excuse me. Pat doesn't have it back, so who has it? Excuse me. We won't do that then. Uh, you didn't sign it last time. I just gave it to you to sign 23. I don't have it. It's the second time it's missing. Does anyone on finance have it by any chance? Somebody doesn't like that. Yeah, I guess not. It should have a red Roman numeral 11 on it. I found it. Oh. I'm sorry. Bad has it. <laughs> Miss File. Who Think made the second on that one? That one? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. Would you call the roll, please? Sure, I'll be happy to. <laughs> oh, excuse me, Alderman Van Akron. Uh, what is $135,000 for? Is that for the TFW building? Alderman T. Van Akron. He won't tell you. He don't know. <laughs> Steve. He asked me that earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I got no answer. City Attorney. Steve uh, or it is for the VFW building. We're scheduled to close at 11 o'clock tomorrow, wow. <laughs> and uh, Nancy won't write me the check unless this passes tonight. So, so it has to pass tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Checks in the mail. Okay. If there's no other discussion, would you call the roll, please? Manny, Aye. Moody, Aye. Perez, Aye. Ports, Aye. Schultz, Stephen Akron, Stephen Akron, Vanderweel, Wangaman, Warner, Aye. Weninger. Bauman, D. Berg, E. Berg, Doyle, 15 eyes. Motion carried. 2357 will go to public protection and safety. 2343 by Alderman Warner, Doyle, Winninger, Vanderweel, and Manny amending the no standing, stopping, or parking areas to add both sides of Georgia Avenue from one tenth of a mile west 
of black walnut trail, tra trail to a point one tenth of a mile west. Alderman Warner. I thank your honor. I would make a motion that general ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Moved and second. Ordinance be put upon its passage under discussion. Under discussion, uh, your honor, this came to our public protection safety committee meeting uh, two meetings ago, and the police liaison officer at Horace Mann Middle School, Officer Stephen Lockwood, brought a concern for student safety to the public protection safety committee on Wednesday, February the 26th. It seems the drop-off circle, which is north of the school, is for buses only and a lot of parents are dropping their kids off right on the street and the kids were running across the street on Georgia Avenue and right to the buses and there actually is a place for them to unload on the other side of the school but this is creating quite a problem there and he was concerned for the children's safety so Public Protection Safety Committee recommends passage. Thank you. <coughs> okay, if there's another discussion, Pat, would you call the roll please? Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Ports? Aye. Schultz? No. Stephen Akron? Aye. Stephen Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangerman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Weninger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Deberg? Aye. Eberg? Aye. Doyle? Aye. Manny? Aye. 14 ayes, 1 no. Motion carried. 2461. We'll go to Committee of the Whole. Steve? You got the rest? Uh, I don't think there are any others. Oh, yeah, I have a. You didn't get those stack of them? I didn't get them. 2462 is a communication from Tom Jordan relative to his concerns about building a new police facility and loaning money to a developer for the South Pier District. And that will go to Building Use Committee and Redevelopment Authority. 2463 is a communication from Glenn Pilling relative to the proposed police facility. And that will go to building use. 2464 is a communication received by the mayor from Michael Sveeton of the Sheboygan Outboard Club requesting extension of their lease with the city for Boat Island. That will go to Public Works. 2465 is a resolution authorizing renewal of the lease of the former Horace Mann Kindergarten School site to the Sheboygan Child Care Center for an additional 10 year period. And that will go to Public Works. Did you want to make any comments? Hang on, Hang on Dennis. Uh, Hang on. Just one comment with respect to this uh, document, the development agreement. This is a draft. We're still meeting. Uh, we've got another meeting scheduled tomorrow afternoon. This is uh, as late as, uh, incorporates changes as late as uh, about 3 o'clock this afternoon. Uh, but there will be some more changes. Uh, so we hope to have another version to you for the Thursday meeting won't you know it won't be another 64 pages it'll be the basically the same but the, there will be some some changes in it um, as I think uh, Gary Dalmas uh, proposed if um, you're reading through and you've got questions and they relate to the wording or something feel free to give me a call if they're financial I'm sure rich would be happy to take a call if they're uh, planning related, uh, you could call uh, Paulette, or engineering related, and the site related, uh, you talk to Tom Holton. Um, we'll all be here Thursday. Uh, it's anticipated the Great Lakes people will be here Thursday as well. And uh, we'll take as long as it takes Thursday. And as, as was said, uh, if we need to go additional days, we'll do that. Okay. All of my prayers. Thank you, Your Honor. I, I guess I just wanted to quickly echo uh, Mr. Dolmas's uh, words. Thank you to Your Honor and to the team that you put together for the hard work that's gone into this. Obviously, I'm going to have a good night reading today, so I'll look forward to, uh, to reading it. Thank you. Alderman Van Akron. Your Honor, thank you. As, as Steve said, we are going to meet on this on Monday, on Monday, on Thursday, um, 6 o'clock. Please, you know, any questions you have, if, it, if you can get them to me right before 6, and we'll just have it very informal. If, if we spend the last couple of nights, I've been spending in Madison until 1, so we might as well do it here. Um, if, you have any, <laughs> if you have any questions, let's, let's get them out in the open. And if something's brought up that night that you want to think about over the weekend and talk to constituents, get input from them, we're very open to the next week. 
uh, Monday to do it again. If not, this document is also going to finance and it will be discussed there. And if you have any questions, you're all welcome to come to finance that night and discuss the financial ends of it with the finance committee. It's going to the capital improvements committee on Friday. Um, so if you really want to be informed, there's a lot, three, four different meetings that this document's going to be talked about at. Um, you're all welcome to be there. And if anybody has any questions, please be uh, feel free to ask those questions at any time. Um, this is going to be a big decision. It's, it's going to be a tough decision for us all to make. Um, so let's make sure we get all the right information and, and make an intelligent decision based on correct information. Alderman Van Ackert. Yes. Before you say it's going to all these committees, uh, actually it's just going to committee whole right now unless you want it to go to finance and everything. I saw one of them going to capital improvements and... We're going to be discussing the budget part of it at capital yeah. improvements, but not the document. Okay? This document is just committee the whole. If it gets referred to another committee, it's either a dual referral or it comes back to council, then referred to another committee. Okay. So, but we have that option. Should so also add it, uh, it'll be introduced to the redevelopment authority on Thursday as well. They're having their regular scheduled meeting, and as part of that, they're going to be reconvening over here to participate in the committee of the whole discussion as well. I'm just trying to make the point that it is going to be at many different you places bet. in the next couple of days, so you have lots of an opportunity to listen and hear. And if you have any questions at any step of the any step of the process, feel free to ask those questions. Thank you. Alderman Berg. Yes, so thank you. And I'd like to uh, echo Alderman Perez's uh, uh, regards with the uh, negotiating staff and the SDC and the Friends of Sheboygan in terms of putting this package together. And now that it's a public document, I wonder if this would be available to the clerk's office or through the library for interested public who may wish to take a look at it. Uh, is that, are those arrangements that we can make? I have the original draft. Uh, the only problem that we have is people have to pay for it and it's 25 cents a sheet. <laughs> so if they're willing to pay money to, to, to get it, I cannot furnish it to everyone. Uh, you're right. I think given the uh, significance of this document, I wonder if perhaps we could check with the library to see if they might be able to have this on checkout for interested parties who may uh, wish to look at this. Uh, I don't know, yeah, Steve, sure. if that would create Steve. a problem. Uh, that wouldn't create any problem. Uh, you know, the thing you should bear in mind is I anticipate to be a, a revised document Thursday. Um, so this is just a draft as of today. Uh, but, uh, you know, I guess that's up to the library as to whether they're willing to do that. Mr. Moose. Friends or SDC? You're talking. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Okay, we will make copies. Start tomorrow. Thank you. Okay, very good. Thank you. Okay. Alderman Warner. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I did have something prepared, but I'll be much more brief than that. I guess I would also like to thank the mayor and the staff in the city and the Friends of Sheboygan for what they've done to put this together. And I mean all the Friends of Sheboygan, all the people that worked on this, this members of this council have taken the time to go to the meetings that were available and to ask questions of the staff as this went along on, on what was happening and questions of the mayor. I bug them a little too often once in a while myself, but uh, right. he always, always tries to deal with me one way or the other. And uh, I think this is going to be great for the city of Sheboygan. Of course, I haven't read the document yet, and I have to see what's all in there. And I think it is right there where we, that we are cautious with this. But I think the caution and risk management skills of the mayor, the staff, and the friends of Sheboygan that have put these documents in our hands today are giving us a real opportunity for the future of Sheboygan. And we have to be very careful with this, but we also have to look forward, not backwards. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. Another thought, Your sure. Honor. And uh, just to give the aldermen and anyone reading the document, perhaps just a, an overview so you get the big picture as you read it because it is very difficult to plow through. Uh, I know it, by the time you get to the 60th page, uh, it, it's real difficult, but uh, it's broken down 
into a number of sections. There's, there's an initial, the first several pages is a project overview that gives a pretty good summary of what the whole deal entails. Uh, then there's about seven pages of definitions. Uh, there's the basic commitments and ownership. Then there's discussion of a number of sub-documents that when we get to the closing will be complete. They aren't done yet. Those, uh, those are a ground lease for the resort project. There'll be a ground lease for the condominium project. There'll be a convention center operating agreement. And there'll be a restrictive covenants and easement agreement. Those four, uh, and a reimbursement agreement. Uh, those basic documents have not been prepared yet, uh, but this document as the overriding development agreement kind of sets forth the basics as to what each of those sub-documents will contain. So you'll get to a section on the ground lease and it'll say uh, that there'll be a ground lease and it'll contain the following provisions along with other provisions, but gives the sense of what will be in each of those particular provisions. Then there's a section on guarantees of the developer. Then there's a couple sections that are entitled conditions precedent. That's, there's a conditions precedent on our part. There's conditions precedent on the developer's part. Those are things that have to be done by both sides before we can close the transaction. Uh, then there are a series of representations and warranties and covenants by the developer. There's a section on damage or destruction of the facility. There's default and remedy provisions. Uh, discussion of costs. Uh, cure provisions if in the event of default. Uh, there's provisions with respect to uh, parking and uh, water park operations and other uses of the district. Uh, then there's a series of miscellaneous provisions that are that are shorter, dealing with indemnifications and uh, real estate taxes, name of the project, insurance, fire and safety hazards, uh, public improvements, water rights and riparian rights, uh, city authorization, condo construction. Uh, the condo construction is one area that we've been working on most recently. That's near the end. At, uh, it was in the prior draft, pages 55 to 58. I'm not sure exactly what pages that it's on now. Uh, but that will likely be uh, tweaked some by the Thursday uh, uh, draft of the document. The issue, just uh, again shortly on the condominiums, is a timing one. Uh, the original concept was that 64 condominium units were going to be built at the same time as the hotel was built. Uh, and it was uh, in the discussions, it was originally contemplated that one lender would lend the developer money for the hotel and the condominiums. Uh, now it's, it's evolved so that the lender will have, or the, uh, the developer will have two lenders, one for the resort and one for the condominiums. And the condominiums, uh, the money will be lent based on a presale requirement so that the developer will have to sell condominium units before the lender will then lend uh, monies to construct uh, the condos. For every one unit that the developers sell, uh, the lender will lend to build two of the condo units. So there's a timing issue and that's, that's what's being addressed in the, uh, the condo construction portion. It's, it's not going to all be done as necessarily at one time. A lot of that's going to hinge on how the condominiums sell. And uh, then there's, there's holdbacks and guarantees and things dealing with what happens if all the condos don't get built. And uh, a, lot of, a lot of nuances, a lot of issues. But that's kind of an overview of the document. This is, again, this is kind of the master document. And there will be sub-documents that uh, will eventually be drafted and presented to you. Um, and that's all I've got. Okay, thank you. So if you're not confused, you will be by the time you get through it all. <laughs> but there's a lot of, lot of things in there we have to go through, so be prepared for Thursday evening. Alderman Ports. 
thank you, Anna. I just have a question for all the person about Akron. In your statement that you just made, it made it sound like we were supposed to give our questions to you. Is that the way you want it, or are we going to be asking them from the floor? Either, either way. I guess if you have some beforehand, um, you can give them to me before, and we can just go through those questions so that they aren't duplicated by other people on the floor. If you have some questions that you find and want those asked, you can hand them to me prior to the meeting, or if you've got something as we're going through it, you can ask that question. Okay, either way. You. Alderman Van Akron, just before we, Thursday night's meeting, do you have someone to take minutes for that meeting? The vice uh, president usually takes minutes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Very good. Just wondering. Alderman Schultz. Thank you, Your Honor. As far as this document being available to the public, I would think it would only be a matter of a couple of keystrokes to put it on our website. Uh, I realize that everybody doesn't have uh, access to the Internet, but many people do, and they should have that option to uh, view it on the website uh, if it could be done. Okay. Right. Alderman Moody. I don't know if it can be done or not, but we can do we try. Sure. Okay. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't agree to that. Alderman I was Woody. just going to say the same thing Alderman Schultz said. When the final draft is ready, could a synopsis be put on the city's website? An understandable breakdown so that people can read it over? If that's possible. The final draft, the final draft you're asking? Well, uh, the final draft is what we have to vote on. Well, then you would want a synopsis. Oh, I don't know. Let's talk about that and see what we can do. Okay. Thank you. Okay, before, oh, Alderman Van Acker. No, yes? Not on this discussion, on something else, if you're done. Go ahead. You know, I, I guess I would just like to, um, in the next couple days, and where our country may be headed, like to uh, express our concern and blessings to all the people from Sheboygan that may be serving in the armed okay. forces. Our prayers and thoughts are all with them. Thank you. Before we leave this evening, please bear with me for a few moments. I'd like to read you something. Since Governor Doyle unve unveiled his budget proposal, it has become apparent our community will face unparalleled fiscal challenges in providing the services we have come to expect while continuing our tradition as a progressive community full of hope, opportunity, and optimism. The proposed 840,000 reduction in state shared revenue, when combined with continue, continuing double digit increases in employee health insurance costs, anticipated wage demands, and necessary capital outlay expenditures, equate to a multi million dollar challenge for this body. It is a challenge created out of necessity to repair a state budget shortfall projected to be a staggering $3.2 billion. Most important, it is a challenge not beyond our abilities. We will respond, unite as a community to the challenge before us, resolving to persevere, united in our purpose, clear in our vision, and focused on our future. While the immediate challenge of an 840,000 reduction in shared revenue demands our prompt attention, we must also fight all attempts by some state officials to cut deeper into shared revenue. Clearly, the challenge is before us, and this council must not only look for immediate, for immediate solutions, but also lies a framework for long-term solutions that will solidify our financial future. A goal I put before you tonight, to retain essential city services by minimum, retain city, essential city services, minimize manpower reductions, and continue our progress progress towards a new police facility and development of the South Pier District. To accomplish this, all city departments, all city employees, and all our residents must become part of the solution. In times of our greatest challenges, participation is not an option, it is a necessity. Through negotiations, we are asking all city employees to increase their current contributions to health care costs. One city union has already agreed to do so, and I urge the remaining union leadership to step forward and follow suit. Such a commitment would result in cost savings to our community in the excess of $100,000.
Furthermore, I'm asking all city employees to offer suggestions to their department heads on ways to reduce costs, identify reoccurring problems, improve quality, eliminate delays, and generate additional revenue within their department. Those employees who feel uncomfortable going to their immediate supervisor may submit their recommendations directly to me. I will personally work with the department heads in reviewing each suggestion. I am also asking this council to review all currently funded but unfilled positions within our city's table of organization. I anticipate that some vacancies across all departments can be eliminated if we, eliminated. If we can take this bold yet necessary step, I project this savings in exclusive of benefits to be in a neighborhood of $300,000. I have asked each department head to review their individual budgets to determine the impact of an across the board 7% reduction. I will utilize this information as a preliminary evaluation tool to determine the impact of these cuts upon the, our organization and our city services. How we will construct budgets in the months ahead and how it affects city staffing will be determined later. I also hope to use the information provided to determine those positions which can be combined with others or eliminated through attrition. I am also asking our finance department and our human resource department to develop a proposal which will allow city employees to utilize retirement credits they have previous, previously earned to leave city employment at an earlier age. I am asking this council to freeze the current wheel tax at a current rate of $6 per vehicle per year and apply these revenues estimated at $200,000 to our general fund. There are other initiatives that as a community, both city and county, we must begin to explore. The possibility of a countywide library system must become a reality. The city simply cannot continue to subsidize library services for non-residents. A suggestion has been made to charge everyone a nominal fee for library card. However, that would require a state statutory change, which is currently being investigated. Correct, Alderman Van Akron? I ask this council to redouble its efforts to consolidate with the county wherever possible. Consolidations with the county would bring savings through elimination of duplication, but would also include a shift of some cost to county government. For instance, since many Sheboygan County residents use Maywood Environmental Park, I feel transferring of this park to a county facility is only appropriate. I also endorse a countywide recycling program and a countywide refuge disposal effort which would provide opportunities for savings. I challenge each of the aldermen and committees to immediately address these topics and to begin working with our county supervisors in reducing the cost of local government. The process for consolidation with the county must begin now for those agreements we will reach, we, we, we reach will serve as a long-term solution to reducing the cost of government. While I have addressed the budget, I am also going to address our ongoing efforts to build a new police facility. I wish to be clear on one point. Despite the current state budget crisis, the construction of a new police facility remains a top priority. We are currently working with county officials to purchase property for the construction of our police facility. This last proposal is one I support since it will not only save taxpayers dollars, but also allow for the future consolidation of law enforcement services. We have been working on a financial plan for this facility, which would involve a 20-year bonding issue that includes borrowing of $680,000 in 2004 and $6.7 million in 2005. Such borrowing would increase our debt service less than $200,000 per year from 2005 to 2007 and less than 100,000 after 207. The cost to each resident in the first two years of this project would be 33 cents per month. In the following years, following 207, this amount falls to 15 cents per month. I believe such a plan is feasible, responsible, and a small price to pay for our safety of our community. Much has been said in recent weeks concerning our ongoing negotiations with Great Lakes regarding the proposed South Pier development. Unfortunately, too much of the focus has revolved around criticism over a perceived lack of communication 
and information being made available. To release information before tonight, before there is even any contract to discuss, would have been irresponsible. Changes occurred with every proposal put forth, sometimes with each ring of the phone. To discuss every detail, every phone conversation, and every idea put forth would have been impossible and delayed the proposal. To discuss an issue, we need a proposal to discuss, and up to now, there hasn't been one. Tonight, you received that proposal, which was briefly reviewed by the city attorney and will be discussed in greater length at a committee of the whole meeting on Thursday. To keep our citizens informed, we will make arrangements to have the meeting televised. Responsible governance and leadership does not take place in editorial columns or headlines, and I encourage each of you to thoroughly review the proposal before you and be ready to discuss it in depth Thursday evening. Some individuals have questioned the timeliness of such a project given the state's budgetary crisis. In reality, if we want to avoid a local fiscal crisis and the need to make dramatic cuts in future city budgets, we must develop the South Pier property to generate additional revenue. The cost of doing nothing is overwhelming. The South Pier development has the potential to generate an additional 1.2 million annually in tax revenue, an additional 2 million in annual development in the area. Great Lakes development projects the creation of two additional 250 jobs in our community. Furthermore, the project does not jeopardize our self-imposed 3% borrowing cap, even with the construction of a police facility. This project has the potential to create opportunity and showcase our community as one of the finest along the western shores of Lake Michigan. It complements our marina, our downtown, and many of the ongoing projects around Sheboygan County. The decision we will be facing in the coming weeks will not be easy. However, leadership requires us to make such decisions. The alternative to doing nothing or to say it's impossible is unacceptable. Our goals of maintaining essential city services and infrastructure, planning and budgeting for a police facility, and developing the South Pier project while meeting the budgetary constraints put before us will require the efforts, ideas, and hard work of everyone in our community. I call on everyone to share in the sacrifices necessary, be a part of the solution, and to take pride in the successes our future holds. Time and time again, because of the efforts of a united community, Sheboygan has led the way in its growth, vision, and standard of living. Let us once again lead the way and, over the, and overcome the challenges we now face. Thank you. Move to the second day, Jerry. Yes. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Opposed?